In this video, we're going to talk about doing rotations in computer graphics using quaternions. So a few years back, while I was first learning about 3D modeling and computer animation, I'd made some 3D models, including the Hubble Space Telescope, the James Webb Telescope, and the uh, Voyager probe. And I wanted to show them off, so I was trying to do some little animations where they would just rotate around, and we'd see them from different angles. Unfortunately, I ran into a problem in my animation program that I was using. Uh, I use Blender, which is a free open source 3D modeling and animation program. I also do tutorials on Blender on my other YouTube channel. You can check out a link in the description if you're interested. So the default way that Blender is set up to handle rotations is using Euler angles. Now these are perfectly fine if you're going to just do something simple, but the more complicated the rotations you're trying to do, the less reliable the interpolation becomes. You see, in animation we set these things called keyframes. So we pick a frame and we say on this frame we want you to be in this configuration. And then we'll go to a later frame and say at this frame we want you to be in this other configuration. And then the computer interpolates between those two. It fills in the gaps. It figures out how to go from the first orientation to the second one. So if we do a bunch of these keyframes in a row, you can see that with the Euler angles we're getting some strange sort of paths that it's trying to draw for us. So I figured there has to be a much better way to do this. Some way that they'll just rotate directly from one orientation to another without doing all of this extra stuff. So I searched around on the internet and it was pretty conclusive. Use quaternions, they said. What are quaternions? So I looked up how to use those in Blender and it's just an option here. And we select that. Then I redid the keyframes for each of the orientations that I sort of wanted to land on. And it worked. Did exactly what I wanted. Just rotating from one orientation to another. So this got me wondering what are quaternions? And why are they so good for doing rotations? And that's exactly what we're going to explore in this video. Quaternions were discovered in 1843 by William Rowan Hamilton as an extension of the complex numbers into higher dimensions. A complex number takes the form of A plus BI, where A and B are real numbers and, and I equals the square root of negative 1 is the imaginary unit. These numbers can be thought of as two-dimensional numbers with a real component and an imaginary component and can be represented on the complex plane, much in the same way that we represent an x and y point on the Cartesian plane. Multiplication of two complex numbers is equivalent to rotation. This is easiest to see when using the exponential or polar form of a complex number, where instead of a real and imaginary coordinate, we have the distance from the origin and the angle made with the positive real axis. Then our multiplication just follows the rule for exponents where we just add them. So you can see when we multiply one complex number by another, we are rotating it by that angle, making a very convenient way to calculate rotations in a two-dimensional plane. Hamilton wondered if it would be possible to extend this to three dimensions. Well, unfortunately, it turned out three dimensions didn't work. But, while walking one day with his wife, he realized how to extend complex numbers to four dimensions. He was apparently so excited that he stopped under the Broom Bridge just outside of Dublin and carved into the stone the identity that makes these numbers possible. I squared equals J squared equals K squared equals I times J times K equals negative one. There is now a Hamilton walk to commemorate the event where people gather to trace Hamilton's steps along the path to the bridge, which still stands. But alas, the carving has long since worn away. The numbers that result from this identity are of the form R plus AI plus BJ plus CK, where R is the real part or the scalar part, and the I, J, and K are the imaginary part or the vector part. One thing that's different about the quaternions versus working with the real numbers or the complex numbers is that multiplication is not commutative. So A times B does not equal B times A. The order in which you multiply matters. So in the same way that we can multiply two complex numbers in order to model a rotation in two-dimensional space, we can multiply quaternions in order to do the same thing in three-dimensional space. 
And for that, we're going to use what is known as a pure quaternion, where the real component is zero, and the i, j, and k components correspond to the x, y, and z axis of our three-dimensional space. Again, it helps to use the exponential form of the quaternion, as we did with the complex numbers, to see how we can use this for rotations. e to the theta u equals cosine theta plus u sine theta, in the same way that Euler's formula works for complex numbers. Here, u is a pure unit quaternion, i plus j plus k, and e to the negative theta u is equal to uh, the cosine of theta minus u sine theta, which is the complex conjugate of a quaternion usually denoted uh, q bar or q star. The formula for multiplying quaternions to produce a rotation in three-dimensional space is v goes to e to the theta over 2 u times v, times e to the minus theta over 2u. So you can see we sort of go halfway there with the first one and then do the other half with the complex conjugate. This allows you to rotate a chosen quaternion v around any chosen unit quaternion u. With the development of vector calculus, rotation matrices, linear algebra, uh, quaternions sort of fell out of favor for a while until the invention of computers and the space program needed a more reliable way to represent rotations versus the traditional Euler angles and their adaptation to pitch, roll, and yaw by the aviation industry. So Euler angles are a system of handling angles where you can rotate about each axis, x, y, and z, uh, in order to do a more complicated rotation, you have to choose an order by which that you're going to evaluate them. And Blender defaults to just X, Y, and Z Euler. So you can see here when I pull this drop down menu that we have a whole bunch of different options of sort of what has priority when this evaluates it. But as we saw with the example at the beginning, unless you're trying to do something pretty simple, you can get into some weird situations with these. One major problem with them is that they are prone to something called gimbal lock. And gimbal lock is where two of your rotational axes will temporarily line up and you lose a degree of freedom until you're able to rotate out of that configuration. For the early space program, you could see how that could be a problem. So when modeling rotations with quaternions, however, you don't have this problem. There is no gimbal lock. You don't have to worry about that. In addition, a quaternion only requires your computer to handle four numbers, whereas a 3 by 3 rotation matrix requires nine entries. So quaternions have another advantage of costing less compute power. This aspect is what has made them popular in computer graphics, particularly in video games. If you have ever rotated your character in a video game to look around or whatever, you are using quaternions and you don't even know it. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. There's a lot more that we could talk about with quaternions. It's a very, very rich subject, but I just wanted to show a little bit about how these very interesting objects can be utilized in computer graphics to do rotations. Hopefully you know a little bit more about how they work and why they work so well for rotations. Okay, and that'll do it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.